When I was a kid, I used to love making homemade scratch art. I found the whole process really satisfying, and sometimes you wanna draw, but a blank piece of paper just doesn't cut it. If you love making art, teaching art, or just learning, please subscribe. Your support means the world to me. I'm a full-time public school art teacher, and I'm embracing digital learning by posting several tutorials a week instead of my usual one. All you need are some crayons or oil pastels, black acrylic paint, and dish soap. I'm making mine with crayons, but you can also use oil pastels. The first step is super easy. Using the crayons or oil pastels that you have, fill your entire page with whatever colors that you would like. Now I go a little crazy and use almost all of them. You could certainly tone down your color scheme and do cool colors or warm colors. I wish I had some metallic crayons. I think that would look awesome. And you can plan your color scheme or you can just go crazy. Once you've filled your whole page, you're gonna mix equal parts black acrylic paint and dish soap. You can also use black temper paint or any of the craft paints that you can find at a store. You're gonna paint over your entire surface and you might have to put two coats so that you can't see your colors beneath your black paint. It does dry pretty quickly, so I do one brush stroke one direction and then I'm gonna go across it the other way so it's solid opaque black. Next, you let it dry completely. It takes maybe an hour. You could put it in the sunlight, you could put it in front of a fan, but it does need to be completely dry before you start scratching. This is a test piece I did earlier and I actually use oil pastels. You can use a mechanical pencil where the lead's not sticking out. You can use a shish kebab stick like I'm using. I even tried it with a stick or a butter knife. Whatever you have that works. I have found that the shish kebab stick, which I have for working with clay, works the best for me. I would recommend cutting a small section of your paper so you have a test piece to work with before you start scratching into your piece of paper. Making more than one sheet is also a great idea. What to draw? That's always the question. I'm gonna be practicing my observational drawing skills by drawing a plant right in front of me. You can draw anything you want on this piece of paper, but I've been taking lots of walks lately and I wanna practice drawing exactly what I see. And this is a mustard plant that's growing in my husband's garden. Just like with any other drawing, save the details for last. And I'm just mapping out my major lines and shapes. Whatever you do decide to draw, it needs to be very line and shape oriented. Um, because your color scheme is random, everything and every mark that you make isn't gonna have so much to do with color, but with the line, shape, and organization. So I'm mapping out my major shapes first, and then I'll go in and scratch away to reveal more color. Enjoy the process. It's a very tactile, fun experience, and don't worry about it if it's not perfect. know exactly what you want to draw beforehand, you can plan and coordinate your color scheme. I was just going with a really fun and vibrant effect and I just couldn't help but using almost every color that I have. If you don't have access to a plant to draw right in front of you, draw whatever's laying around your house. Coffee cups, um, you could even do the Zentangle technique. I teach a drawing lesson for donuts and I think any fun food would look awesome on this bright and colorful background. I could even see a really gorgeous sunset landscape. Now that I have the hang of it, I'm gonna to commit to more details and scratching away to reveal more color. I 
have all of this blank space, so I'm gonna repeat the same plant with a different angle on the other side. Again, I'm gonna start with my large shapes first, the lines that I see, the big leaves, and where the flowers kind of cluster together. Then once I'm happy with my shape, I'll go back and reveal more color. I'm doing the same plant, different angle, because I'm really focusing on drawing what's in front of me. Sometimes people are intimidated to draw things that are right in front of them because if it doesn't look right, it's obvious. Let loose, and if you're drawing an object from direct observation, you're trying your best to capture it exactly as you see it, but you're only human, so it's gonna be your interpretation. I have a second piece of scratch board, and as I was doing the first one, I'm sitting by the window in my kitchen, and I can just hear birds at the bird feeder just going crazy. So they move way too fast for me to capture them from real life so i went to the audubon website and that's a great way to look at images of birds in nature if you don't have access to it right in front of you and he captured birds with a scientific likeness so that's not what i'm going for here i'm just looking for shapes i'm looking for patterns i'm looking for lines and i'm doing a flycatcher because hey this is oklahoma and a flycatcher is our state bird I'm gonna add a little bit of nature to my bird so it doesn't look like he's just like in a black void. So I'm putting him on a branch, I'm adding some leaves, and I have a lot of black in my background, which I could certainly add to, but I'm gonna leave it pretty simple for now. This technique is so fun, so hands-on, and it really does brighten up any drawing. Instead of a blank piece of paper, you can create an artwork with a black background and just a vibrant color scheme. Here are my two finished products, but you can draw anything that you want, whether it's right in front of you or it's an image that you look up. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out my website, thatartteacher.com, for long-form blog posts about what I teach.